I let my inner child out to play and I wound up making this sweet little picnic quilt. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the inspiration behind this quilt and I'm gonna show you start to finish how I made this sweet little quilt. You can call it a folk art quilt. You can call it an art quilt. You can call it a wall hanging. Just don't call it a placemat. So let's get started. The theme of the blog hop challenge was for the birds by Moose Dash Quilting. I pulled out some scraps from my scrap box and found a couple inspirational photos to get me started. They immediately made me think about beaches and seagulls. Okay, I'm gonna cut some fabric for the background of this quilt. Not sure quite how big I want it to be, but maybe around here. Don't need both sides of this, so I'll cut this off. Then I need the sky fabric. I think I want a little bit of a curve. To this and not make it exactly straight. So I'm not sure. Do I want the water to go left or right? Looks like it's going this way anyway, so I might as well just lean into that. More of a curve. to go the same way as this. If you put them on top of each other, then they can follow the same curve. So I think. And now you can see that this is gonna fit along this way, so I can just sew along here. And then I'm going to cut a piece From here, that's going to fit a little bit, follow the curve a little bit. I can use this, I think, as a template so that I don't wind up, I don't wind up cutting into this fabric. Sure, how big I want this to be, but maybe a little bit thicker than this. the sky, I have the sand. I'm just going to sew these two pieces together with the machine and then I'm going to stitch this on with raw edges as an applique just so that it adds that beach scene with the waves and that'll be all there will be for this background and then I'll be able to go ahead and um, add the pieces on top.
Here's my sewn background. And here's my scraps that I chose earlier. I move them aside a little bit so I can start with this work. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make a little pole for the bird to sit on. This is this paper is already fused. So I can just attach it somewhere. Um, I think I want the pole. Is that too close? Let's move it farther down. I don't think anybody would try to put a pole that, that close to the water. I don't know. Maybe on this side. We can make it this way so the bird can be outside of the water. Like, so the bird would show in the water as a background. I can go ahead and peel this fusible and add it to the side. to be pressed in order for it to stay though. Now I need a dark fabric for a bird. These are kind of small. I'm not sure how. Okay, so I think what I remember now is that the bird is supposed to be white and the wing is darker. So I think it's it's gonna be fine with this larger fabric. And I also have this that I can use for the background for the bird as well as this. I like this one better, I think. I don't know how big, this is kind of big for the bird. Okay. The pole is kind of small, so the bird have to be about this small. I think this is too big, and this is too small. Is that better? Not a camel, it's a bird. Um, let's say it is, that's fine. <laughs> And then the wing. I think this should be good. I think I want a couple of the birds here in the foreground. This one's kind of big though to be in the background. Maybe we'll make this one closer to the front. And then we can put smaller birds in the background so it looks like they're in the background. And although this color doesn't stand out very well against the beige, maybe I will have the birds, this bird be white. It will stand out better against the white. Maybe I can just make sure I, I'm gonna leave it this color. I can go ahead and um, I, when I stitch it, I can make sure that I stitch it with a darker color so that'll stand out a little bit. 
and then I'll just make two birds with this fabric. decide which direction I want them to face. Maybe I'll do it this way so they face different directions. Not very good at drawing, and cutting is not that much better. If you don't know how to draw, you're not going to be able to cut the shape either. I think I want them to be a little smaller anyway. Because these are too similar in size to these, to that one. I can add beaks to them later. I think this one needs to be a little smaller too. I think the adding adding the wing makes a makes a big difference in this quilt. So let's do that. I think this is the only dark fabric I have, so this will work. It's gonna have to work. one. I think this might be too big. Yeah, these are both too big. Just make them smaller by increments and then until I find the size that I like. I think a little bit skinnier would be better still.
need to add some other things in here. So I kind of like the idea of, say, maybe a beach umbrella or a lighthouse. So I have I have this pink fabric would also be nice as an awning or something like that. Or a blanket, maybe a picnic blanket. You think of this as a picnic basket. Make like a little picnic basket. Probably gonna have to be a little bit curved. And then it needs a handle so that it looks like a basket. Doesn't need a blue handle. Or handle like this. What do the handles look like? I'm trying to think whether I want it just to go down this direction. Would that look like a basket if I did that, or do I just... Let's try it, I guess. The only way we'll know is if we try it. Quite sure if that looks like a picnic basket, but maybe if we put it on the blanket, it would be more clear. Is this a blanket? This is kind of small compared to the basket. All of my little scraps are tiny. We're going to have a striped blanket. It's the only big piece I have. It's too big for a beach. Trying to figure out the size that I want this to be for now. Need to bring out my trash can and start using it for all this stuff here. Hmm. I like this. It's a little, little big. I think the waviness of it is actually good because then it kind of looks like it's kind of folded and rumpled around. It's not going to be jagged though. It's fine if it is though. Make some plates out of this one. I think the plates are going to have to be small.
it's probably going to be a little bit oval shaped to look dimensional. need some glasses. Maybe these are glasses? And the people with the picnic is out in the water, so these birds are very tempted to try to eat the food that's in here, in the basket. Make some glasses for these people. I think it's good. That's normal people placement is some people like to sit real close to each other and other people need their space. Oh, I like this. So I'm going to have to add some legs, feet for these, some legs for the birds, but I think I could probably do that with some embroidery floss. Not sure these birds what color their beaks are, if they're dark or if they're yellow. Um, could make them red. I guess I don't have to make them any particular color. If I make them red, then that'll let me use this fabric. Okay, let's do that. my third beak. And we cut two. Maybe I did. These are children's scissors, so they're not very sharp, so that kind of makes it hard to cut a little bit. Maybe this one will work better. Actually, I probably don't even need to trim this much. not helping. I'm going to grab my adult scissors. I think I pretty much shredded this fabric too. So I need 
I'll try it. Try this one, and if I actually, it's already bent out of shape. Easy as that. I think there's room for a lighthouse in here. Maybe we'll just stick with the picnic blanket and leave it at that. Um, I want a boat in the background though. What color will the boat be? Let's see, we have... This could be a sail. Sales look like. I just fussy cut this to be the sale. Um, mm -hmm. This looks more picnic y than anything else. I've got a solid red. On a red boat. This is nice. It's a little small, I think, for the boat, but I guess it would be. It would be, and it would be in the background. It'd be far away. So I'll just make this one similar, the other side similar to this curve. I like the curve. Like that. Maybe we need a red boat out there too. This one. I think I need some red in the back there to go with this. So we'll have a red boat. Why not? Deep. Looks like a boat in a cartoon. Let's make it a little bit thinner. There, I like that. I'm going to clean up my mess a little bit here so that all these things will be out of the way. And you can see that I want what I'm left with, where we left off. Uh oh. We've got three birds. We have a picnic basket with some plates and glasses. We have two boats. And there's one. The other thing that I have here, there's the other wing. Is the batting. I found some batting here that had already been cut from another project and so I'm just going to use that. It's better to just, since I don't know what size I want the quilt to be anyway, this is as good a size as any. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one. There. 
this thing just fell up so maybe I can just use this one as a pole for the boat. I like that. <laughs> I also have this fabric that was here amongst the other things. I think I was using it for one of the projects that I was working on and I think this would also make a good uh, this would make a good backing fabric. So let me just make sure the size is going to work here. So this is the backing. And this will be the batting. That's a good size for both of these. Clean this up a little bit. It's close enough. And now I can lift this off gently to avoid getting any of the quilt. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way and put the backing and the batting down. Sure, it's nice and flat. I'm going to take out these little pieces off so that I can shake out this quilt. There's just too many loose pieces here. I just pulled off the applique off of the quilt top so that I can clean it, clean this up and layer this. And I'm putting the ground, the sand as close to the bottom as possible so that it can, because I want as much sand as possible on this quilt. When I was sewing these waves in, I left this a little lumpy so I could add some texture into the waves. But now I can go ahead and add the birds. Here's my pole that the bird's going to be sitting on. I think the here. And one bird can come here. Actually, we need room for the picnic basket. Now I'm feeling here where the quilt starts and ends to make sure that I have all the applique pieces on the inside of the of the on the inside of the quilt here. The boat. Put my basket, plates, glasses. Where's my other glasses? There's the other glass. The bird can go here on the ways. Okay. 
all oh, those little things that I thought were trash are actually beaks. <laughs> okay. And I think this is the biggest one. One of these goes here. This was our other glass. There's our handle to our basket. And there's our fourth plate. Here's our last beak. Okay. I think we can draw eyes on here if we need to. I think that this looks good to me. And one thing that I saw when I was looking at the picture that I was originally looking at was some flying birds. Just making these little flying bird shapes. Not sure if they look like birds or not, but I think if they're in the air, people will get that picture of them. Sharp corner is not good. So weird, you can make shapes like that, just draw them in when you're drawing, but to me these don't look like birds, but I think it's close enough. Hopefully, hopefully you'll get the idea when you see it. I think they also had a sun, which was nice. I like that idea of a sun. Let's see if I have anything yellowish I can use. Now this one, it's not a very sunny day though, if I use that. I think I want something a little more yellow. Let me go into my scrap box and find a yellow. This orange would work, but there's a bright yellow, but it's too patterned. Making a lot of yellow. Oh, there's one. See? This is fringe salvage, but. This is a small one. Hmm. I like this color the best. I'm going to see if we can use these, but I'll leave this one out and this one in case we can use that instead. Okay. I think if we use two like this, we could use just join them together to make this big circle. I think that's a good enough circle, big enough circle. The one that was in my inspirational post was not very big either. I have to make it a semi, a quarter circle to make sure I make them even.
Yeah, and if it does mean that I'm cutting off all the pretty fringe. This would go on the bottom and this would just cover this up. Doesn't look very round. why these don't look like birds I think so I need to cut them more like this more v-shaped that looks like a collar <laughs> okay I think this is enough for this quilt so I'm going to sandwich this quilt and get to sewing. I could go upstairs and find a bigger yellow fabric, but this will do. And then get a glue stick for these little pieces. Using regular children's glue to add these pieces to secure them until I can sew them in place. Hoping that this gray, bluish gray thread that I have is going to be dark enough and I don't need to change that out. Okay, I think all of the big pieces are secure. So now it's just a matter of quilting all of this in place. I'm going to secure the applique with 
uh, first. And it also has double duty, sort of double duty as uh, quilting. And then I can just quilt the background when I'm done with that. And I'll have to put little feet on the on the birds. I think, yeah, I think the bird has to be a little bit higher for that to happen though. There we go. More like a duck. They all have different, different shaped beaks, but that's okay. This is a folk artsy quilt. It's a little picnic on the beach.
Vamos para allá.
Now it's really late, but the quilt is quilted. It's really dark. Hopefully there's enough lighting in here for you to see. But right now I'm just going to trim the quilt. Okay, just trim this quilt. Just checking to make sure it's all correct. Okay, it looks straight to me. A little bit of a difference here, but I think it's close enough. I think this is because of the applique that's here. And another way you can check Besides checking this direction lengthwise and widthwise, you can also check it on a diagonal to make sure that you have a nice 45 degree angle here. And also on the other side, same thing. Make sure everything looks straight. I think it is. It's close enough. Okay, so I need to bind this quilt, but I think I'm just going to wait until tomorrow to do that because it is past my bedtime. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Um, I think I cut off all the little stitches where I hopped patterns. And this I actually did on purpose to travel. So, let me show you, here's a uh, sailboat, a bird in the corner, there's the sun, more center than I thought it was supposed to be, here's the other boat, here's the bird, the other bird, there's the picnic, picnic table, and there's the other bird. And that's all we have so far. You can see the quilting stitches a little bit. I put ways in the water, in the white part, and I also put ways on the outside. And hopefully it does still make it a nice um, serene scene and doesn't look like there's a big storm happening. I just watched a movie about a storm. So maybe that's what I had in mind when I was making these quilting stitches. But I wanted to keep it light uh, in the stitching. I didn't want to overdo the stitches, so there are parts here that don't have any stitching. Hopefully that doesn't look like it's missing things. And also there's no quilting stitches in the sand. I don't really know what kind of stitches go in the sand. So I may eventually add some more stitches there, but for now I think I'm calling it good. So that's pretty much all that I had finished before the due date. And so um, I went ahead and, and published it on my blog. When I think about making a story quilt, it makes me think that I have to have a profound story, something really quilt worthy. But I found that if I just play and let the story develop over time, it winds up being a more successful quilt for me. And I found that the story behind the quilt does not have to be really profound or exciting. It can just be a story that somebody can make up on their own. Here's what the quilt looks like so far. And what I've done now is cut up some scraps for the um, binding. I didn't have a lot of fabric left over. So what I decided to do is just to cut it up into as much as I could. And I think this will fit. There'll be enough to make a two color binding. So I'll just match the binding to the um, fabric that I have here. And then I can just use the beige to finish off the sand part and that way it'll keep everything all balanced. This way I won't have, I don't need a lot of fabric. I can just use the fabric that I have and it'll make it nice and open so it won't look like there's a finish at the end here. So it'll just keep going. So there's not very much left at all. The other thought that I was having is I, I, I'd like to have something here that would go across the water and the sand so that it kind of looks like one cohesive picture instead of two parts. So it looks like one big hole instead of two little parts. I'm going to do some more quilting here. I could add something here or I could add something in the corners. What I was thinking is if I made, say if I made a lighthouse or something like that, then it would take over either here or here, take up the space. So, and if I made it small enough, then it would look like it was far away. Although the boats are pretty big for that, for the boats are pretty big though for a lighthouse in the mid ground to look 
like it would be far away. But that's okay. I can't think of anything else I think that I could add unless it's a pole of some kind. A pole would be a lot easier to make. Palm tree. Maybe a pole would work. I have some more of this red fabric. Maybe this could be like a flag. I also have this fabric available. That could also be a flag. Maybe like a pole that has little flags on it. Would that look anything interesting? Let's see. Here. Right here. If I did it here, then I won't need to add any other quilting here. This one is too long. Like that. Too big. Oops. Bump the camera. It's kind of weird to have something right in the middle, but you know, that happens. That's normally if I was taking a picture, I would take a picture of something that was right in the middle. I do have this fabric I could use maybe instead of flags, it could be like signposts, like this. This is a matte fabric, so it it could look like a signpost, and if it doesn't look like a signpost, it could still look like a flag. So, since I'm not using like a brown wood brown, so I'm going to um, bind it and then just add this uh, signpost.
So before I added the signpost, you could, your eye would just move around the quilt and see the story about the seagulls. But once I added the signpost, to me it adds another layer of story about the picnic and the family who got sidetracked. Maybe they were looking at the, maybe they're having a picnic and they looked at, kept lo looking at the signpost to see what they would do next. They might go snorkeling or fishing. They might go to the boardwalk or go shopping. They might go to the cove and collect seashells. They might go parasailing or go on a boating trip. Or they might take a ferry across to the island that is out of the reach of the picture. So there's all sorts of different things that the family can do. Or maybe they just left their trash and walked away and deserve to have the seagulls eat up their picnic. I always thought that when making a story quilt that the story needs to be profound and something quilt worthy. And I just it's hard to decide what kind of quilt what kind of stories are quilt worthy. But the way this quilt turned out is the birds came first and then the story came later. And to me, that's a wonderful way to do it because then I don't have to worry about finding a profound story. And as you can see, the story does not have to be profound. It can just be any, any story that um, the viewer can actually make up on their own. So it's just a matter of playing and letting your imagination run wild and make the story up as you go. Thank you for joining me while I make this sweet and playful quilt. Please subscribe to my channel to see more of my quilts. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your support and I'll see you in the next video.